at first dispassionate when being handed this book. Well, come on! Economic books? Behavioral economics? I thought, uh, this is psychology book or something? So with your psychology as well, I thought it's gonna be hard at first. I felt the same way too. But when I found that Nobel Prize winning economist, George A. Eikerloff, in his foreword to the book starting the secrets of the money life is economic at its best, and we are going to have fun with sequence of beautiful stories in the books, I can help myself and I cannot stop reading it. Yes, it's fine. It's like a reading novel about economics. Do you guys remember the Prof. Roy books for material about behavioral economics, about the nature and the methodology? After reading the book, I believe we all have the better understanding about the behavioral economics. I think the authors Kai Yu Chen, an HP economist, and Marina Krakowski has succeeded translating behavioral economics into concrete action steps for businesses. Their research area explores the way of thinking about the force that drive human behavior in business. Yes, it explains people's sense of fairness and reciprocity, attitude toward risk and trust, the human tendency to game the system, no fair method of prediction. But the fact is, human doesn't always behave rationally. Yeah. And according to Chen, sometimes not even in their own best interest. The secret of the many lab show how business can use and even profit unpredictable human behavior. Traditional thinking in economics and even in the business world has been people are essentially greedy, selfishly driven by the desire of for personal profit above all else. Secrets of the money labs take findings into field of behavioral economics mainly to experiments and draw links to real-world examples and discuss how we might use them in the business. The main subject discussed from chapter 1 to 8 are uncertainty, fairness, reciprocity, reason or rationality, reputation, trust, rules of the games and predictions. Do you guys want to start sharing your views on the highlights of the book? Yeah, I found chapter one of the book focuses on uncertainty. It shows how much people are willing to pay to reduce uncertainty. In this chapter, the author shows how people's decisions are impacted by the uncertainty and therefore don't always act as per standard economic predictions. So the use of risk management is highlighted and provides insights into how you can utilize this aspect of decision-making process. Chapter 2 takes you through the research on fairness around the world. Fairness is a negotiation process. People want to get what is fair. Business can apply this knowledge when it comes to dealing with employees and customers because as the author state, they would rather take nothing at all than get what seems unfair. People value fairness and are prepared to pay for it. They also use reciprocity in their dealings to repay good acts of faith. However, if you cross the fairness boundary, they are also likely to take retribution in some forms. The authors discover that it is human behavior to punish those whom they feel shortchange them. When applied to companies, reciprocity is more than just the golden rule. When employees and customers feel shortchanged or cheated, business suffers. In this chapter, we will find interesting discussion on the giving of gifts or money and how the recipient can react. This chapter is very entertaining. It shows how financial incentives can disrupt other motives, how there are unwritten standards or expectations in how we all play the game of business. Once you understand what people want, how do you know what they will actually do? In chapter four, shows the limits of our ability to optimize for what we want. The chapter shows that humans are poor decision makers, particularly when overloaded with information. We aren't even good at knowing it's better we should select. Since people will never perform as optimally as machines, the authors show how to nudge your partner's decisions closer to the optimal level. I think in exploring reputation, the author notes that a good reputation doesn't ensure future performance. The reason is 
that the better a reputation is the greater the opportunity for exploitation. Yes, it can be stressed enough. Many of us, come on, many of us have gone to the internet to give a negative feedback uh, and where the company or product or services that provided uh, a bad experience, right? Uh, Chen and Karpovsky, I think uh, they have argued that uh, consumers will buy more from the companies with good reputation, even that means spending more money. Reputation is one way to deal with uncertainty about other people's behavior. It's the focus of the chapter 5 of the book. The book examines experiments on reputation and how people instinctively move away from organization and people with a poor reputation. The bind of building a good reputation is that you have more to lose and may become risk averse. A related concept is trust. People are far more willing to take chances with those that they trust. Uh, the book examines the link between trust and trustworthy. Uh, the authors introduce the trust can and show what it reveals about the open asking, uh, wealth creating relationship with others, and interesting outcomes of an international experiment or survey is that the countries with the high level of trust have a better Chapter 7 deal with what people do in situation where rules are important. And chapter 8 delves into a hot topic in business experiment, predicting the seemingly unpredictable. The authors take us to look at the new field of predicting market, from the just for fun Hollywood stock exchange to internal market in HP and other companies. They also introduce other ways to make business prediction and reduce the cost of uncertainty. Overall, the book is enjoyable to read. We all agree. Uh, Chen has turned this research into successful results at HP, uh, filled with smart anecdotes, mathematical equation, research studies, and little wit. Uh, this book is an easy and interesting read, and for the creative reader, will be thought profiting in how uh, uh, they tackle their business and the pricing of their goods to the customers. Couldn't agree more. It also packed with similar insights, likely to be useful to any managers who want a better understanding why employees, customers, and suppliers behave the way they do. If you want to understand how pricing decision can improve your business, this book will help you. If you are looking at an entertaining book and on how economic really works on the micro level, you would like this book. The purpose of this book is uh, they focusing on short-term experiment, but assuming that they apply to the long-term challenge. But on the other hand, it has an engaging style. The authors neither talk down the reader nor alienate them with the jargon letter verbal debris. For me, this book. It's not a how to guide. However, it's more of this is what happens when preferences. Action in exploring reputation. The Bagus lagi, Pak. Tahu aja dulu.